doctor should be should be sending you an updated version of that with all of these changes in it. So in getting started, um, there are 16 forms so far that have been updated and three new forms that have been added. It is my understanding that Trek forms have not been updated yet, and I don't know that they will be because the updating has to do with force compensation and um, MLS wording. So there's, there's three specific things in the provisions that you're going to kind of see as a theme throughout, and that is the rate that the realtor will receive, um, that things cannot be open-ended amounts have to be inserted and there must be an agreed rate in the agreement and no other amount can be paid above that rate agreement whenever it comes to the buyer's reps. So you're going to see that throughout and then you're going to see amendments and things like that as we go forward. Um, these are working documents. I set last weekend on um, five days ago, whatever it was, in a class with the attorneys for Texas Realtors and the forms had already been updated that week. So these are pretty much working documents. Um, this has not been confirmed to me, but in my opinion, Texas Realtors put these out before August 17th or before compensation comes out of MLS so that we are prepared and we're ready. So we've got two things that we have to do right now. We've got to understand the forms and how you're going to use these forms and in what order these forms are going to be used in. And you also have to get your conversations down. So um, with the area leaders, that's another, those are other documents that we're also working on together to give you conversation scripts. I'm not going to get into all of that today, um, but please know that that is coming. I don't want there to be any panic with you. From, from what I'm hearing right now, we're still at about four weeks out um, for Netris. It's my understanding that Netris should convert over where they remove um, compensation around July 30th. We are ahead of the game with Epic. We've been ahead of the game and we have been um, gathering as much information that we can to keep everybody at ease and that we just get through this transition with ease. August 17th is our drop dead um, timeline that the Department of Justice has given us across the United States. That compensation has to come out of MLS. So we are preparing for August 17th. So we will hear the August 17th timeline a lot. Um, okay, so let me screen share and we're gonna get started. Can y'all all see my screen? now? Yes. Okay, perfect. What I'm going to do whenever I send this um, to you and the blueprint is I'm not going to send an entire form unless it's one of the three forms that are the new forms that have been added, such as this form right here. So this is still in draft mode. This could change. Um, but in, in the other forms, I'll just send where um, the red lines or blue lines are and what is needed for you to know at that time. So this is, um, this is our first form. And this is, you'll, you'll hear me reference a lot of numbers throughout. You'll start to get into know the numbers as well. But this is 2701 and it's going to be our, re, our amendment to representation agreement. That does not specify buyer or seller. So this is going to be our amendment to either the listing agreement or a buyer's representation agreement. If you have anything under contract prior to June 24th, you do not need to use this form. But anything that you put under contract prior to August 17th, I would recommend you using this form. After August 17th, Absolutely, any closings after August 17th or anything going under contract. Um, and they have also said that if you just wanna do a whole new like buyer's representation agreement or if your seller wants a new listing agreement, that is fine too. But if they are okay with amending their current agreement, this would be the form that you're going to use 
to amend the agreement. With that, it's going to have to accompany the appropriate amendment. So for listing, this would be your appropriate amendment. <clears throat> I want to step back for one second. For those of you who were on um, the call whenever I shared with you basically how to take a property that is under contract with a sale of other property attached to it. There are so many moving parts to that, such as, you know, the active kickout, the making sure that you have backup offers, that they're not just offers coming in, getting your seller under two agreements, so to say. Um, then there's notices that have to be given to the buyer. There's notices that have to be given to the second buyer. There's all all these different moving parts to it. This is what's happening right now with this. So it may not just be one sheet of paper. It may be one sheet of paper that now has another sheet of paper with it. If at any point in time, you're reading through my notes that I'm going to send to you and you still have question or questions, if you're on a team, call your team leader first. If you um, are a single agent, call your area leader first before calling Ken. That's why Epic has put all of these different people in place so that Ken is not bombarded with literally hundreds of phone calls. That's what we're here for is, is to help to answer those questions and get you possibly answers quicker. With us being eliminated out of that and going straight to Ken, um, it, it doesn't help us to be able to help you. So, if you um, need to amend a listing agreement that is that is in place now that you wrote prior to June 24th, this is going to be your amendment. I'm not going to get into all what this says because it mirrors the listing agreement and we're going to train on the listing agreement in just a few minutes. Um, the next one that would accompany if it's a buyer's representation agreement is, I don't know why I don't have it right there, but it's essentially 1505. Oh, it's right here, 1505. No, that's 1507. There's an amendment 1505. It must be in my buyer's rep up on down. So we'll see it in just a second. Um, but 1505, so you're going to amend a buyer's representation agreement before June 24th. And then with that amendment, you're going to have the actual amendment that is amending it. So there's two pieces of paperwork. Okay. Now let's move into our buyer forms. And our first buyer form is, there's two now buyer representation agreements. One is a one sheet, just like Epic's one sheet. Ken and I had a conversation yesterday and um, we feel like this is the form that across the state, we all need to be using instead of the original one sheet with Epic. We need to move to this form. This form is two things. One, it can technically take you, if you check full services, it could technically take you through to a closing. Um, it's, it's very similar to the Epic one page. So it has all of the, the things in it, so to say, um, the client obligations, the broker compensation and the intermediary wording in it. So if, if they're ready to just move towards signing a buyer's representation agreement, then you would check full services and right here, you would fill in what those broker fees are going to be, whatever it is that you agree to. If they're not ready to sign a um, buyer's representation agreement, from what the Texas Realtors attorney said, the reason that they put box number two in, which is showing services, the reason that they put that in is um, there was an overwhelming request um, I believe is how she put it from Texas Realtors to have something similar to what Zillow has done with their touring agreement. Um, hi, um, is it hi key? I'll, I'll, I'll be, let me just finish this one part and then I'm going to let you ask that question. Um, just unmute yourself and ask it as soon as I'm finished. Um, so if you have, if you check this box with showing services, you have to understand that you are going to eliminate paragraphs six through eight. This is just a showing agreement, interchangeably a touring agreement. In this, they are asking for an amount. So I'm gonna, I wanna read this so that we understand what it says. 
Broker will provide client with access to properties in the market area. Client will pay broker a fee of blank due upon execution of this agreement. So the due of blank, um, as Ken knows, for a moment, I was like, I went into a heart palpitation. What do we put in this blank? And so Ken and I really talked it through. And, you know, this blank is area related. There may be areas of Texas that it would be very easy to put $50 in that blank or $100 or $200, whatever your showing fee is. You know, if you get into the Houston areas and you drive two or three hours to show people, I, I'm using that as an example. I'm, I'm out in West Texas, so I don't know how it, it all geographically works across the state. But, you know, if you're comfortable putting an amount in there, you can certainly put an amount in there. Um, with that, if you do, that means that right then the buyer is going to need to pay you. So that's what the agreement is. So with that being said, you're going to need to have a check made out from them, either to Epic, um, I mean, not either to Epic, either a check, a money, or, money order or a cashier's check made out to Epic, and you are going to need to mail that in to Epic with a copy of this agreement. We still have to track it at Epic as to where this money is coming in for legal reasons. So if there is a fee to be paid, that would be how it would be done. And then of course you can request it on a CDA um, to get your portion of that. Um, okay, Flo Flo whoever wants to ask questions, go ahead and ask questions. So, uh, oh, go ahead. Well, mine is answered. I was wanting to ask for you to enlarge the the document, but I figured out how to do that. So. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have a question on on the very beginning. You said con if anything is contracted by the seventeenth in our harm in our har class, they said anything that was contracted and closed by the seventeenth. You don't have to amend, but if it That's does, if and contract, I, I, it hasn't I, closed. Is that correct? Well, in the class that I was in, and we will get clarification on that and send it out. In the class that I was in, it basically said if there is a contract in place prior to June 24th, then you don't have to go in and amend it. But anything after June 24th, if it has been contracted before, but if you're doing anything after, then you need to be using the new forms. That's what it was told in my class. Ken, if you've okay. got anything else to say on that, please, you know. Well, in, in the hard class, they said contracted and closed. If it hasn't okay. closed, then you have to do the amendment because the contract isn't valid. According to them, it's not, it has to be amended per the terms. So, and, and I want y'all to hear what Roland's saying. I'm always one that's always going to err on the side of more paperwork and more updated paperwork is better. Um, you know, on my team, there's forms that aren't even required by Epic that I make the team do just because I feel like it covers them more. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm with you, Roland. You know, if, if anything that has not closed or whatever, I agree, it needs to be updated to reflect um, where we are today. I think it's just going to keep us out of trouble. Was there somebody else who wanted... Um, I just had a question about yeah. the buyer representation agreement, the short form. Yes. On the showing services, it is there a specific way that we need to charge or are, are we free to negotiate no. that? Yes, that, that was my next point. You are free to negotiate that. Epic is not going to set a standard. And if if you feel in your area that that needs to be a zero, you, you can put zero. So that... That is that is up to you. Um, it's it's yeah. really that may be conversations that you might want to have your, with your area leader. Um, whatever is is more indicative of your area and what you're comfortable with doing in that amount there. And but does it, we're not going to dictate that on an epic level. And does the eighty five fifteen apply that split still apply to this fee that we're charging if we decide to charge a fee? Uh, that would be a kin question. Uh, uh, and. I'm going to say that we haven't uh, um, um, discussed that yet because this form is brand new, but I will get you an answer. I have a question. Yes. 
on the showing services, it says the client will pay broker a fee of. So they're not necessarily paying us. So if no. we do charge them, how do we get that money over to the broker? So what you're going to have to do is either have a money order, cashier's oh. check, or personal check made out to Epic. And you're going to need to mail that in to Epic along with a copy of this form. Okay. Okay. Are, are, are there plans to do it electronically? Question. Right now, we're not set up to be able to do it electronically. Right. However, that may come to be. Right now, I'm trying to get us through tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Question. Can you, put, can you put it but to like... $25 per house. Can you put that in there? And also my th second question to that is, um, can you then say, like, let's say you show 10 houses, they've paid, you're doing $25 a house. So they've done $250. Is there a way that you can say, Hey, I will give you a commission credit of this money that you've paid me now to show you these houses? Okay. Let me, let me answer the first one. The first one is, if you go, if you remember what I said, there's going to be three things that Texas Realtors wanted to ensure in the very beginning. And one is there has to be an agreed upon rate and it cannot be open-ended. That is open-ended. $25 per house is open-ended. So I would say no to that. You need an amount. I'll show, you know, we're looking at 10 houses this week and it's $200. If 11 goes in, you need to amend it. There cannot be open-ended amounts. Oh, so you could do like zero to 10 houses. Nope, you cannot. $100, do 11 to 20, another 100. That? that in there, that's a, I would say that would be open-ended. Maybe you can try to only show eight. Are they going to want a discount? Yeah. Can you do like a showing package? Like our fee is $500 for our showing service. And that's it. Is that close? Ended? I don't see, I would have your area leader in the, and Ken approve that if you want to do that. I don't, I don't see where that contradicts in this at all. Okay. I have a question. Do we have to offer showing services or can no. we say we just uh, want to offer full services? No, you do not have to offer full ser showing services. This, the showing services that was put in here was just in response to the touring agreement that Zillow put out. That a lot of, you know, a lot of the Zillow realtors, I mean, we have them in Avonlea that are already using the touring agreement and they really like it. So it really just depends on, you know, what your presentation is and, and how comfortable you are with, with that presentation of going full services. And there's a lot of people who are speaking against, I yesterday said on two masterminds, one spoke in favor of showing services, one spoke totally against it. So there's, there's lots out there. So it's really going to depend on what you create in your unique value selling proposition and how you present that. If it just, I believe that what Texas Realtors was doing is that if you get down to just not being able to get an agreement in place, they're just not comfortable with it. This is your backup. And an additional question to that, I'll, I'll lower my hand. I'm sorry. You're okay. Um, so if we offer showing services, does that mean we are fiduciary or are we still representing the seller? There's a representation agreement we're going to get to in a few minutes. Okay. That you're going to have to do as well. So you would not use this to, if you are representing the seller, just to answer your question, if you're representing the seller and you're just opening the door as a listing agent, we are going to have to give um, a representation disclosure to them saying that we would not be representing them, but that doesn't mean that we can't move to intermediary. I, I was actually referring to right now, if we don't have a buyer's representation agreement and we show a house, we're representing yeah. the seller. You so, can no longer show a house without a showing without some sort of showing agreement in place. That's per that's a federal law now. That's right, but but if we have the showing agreement in place, am I a fiduciary or do I still represent the seller? No, if you are only using showing services, you are not representing them. You are basically providing them access to the property. So okay. that means the things that we're not supposed to do in Texas, such as provide CMAs that would go you would you're correct in that you cannot okay. do that until you move to full services got it thank you 
Oh, you're welcome. I apologize. It took me a minute to understand what you were asking. Oh, no worries. Okay. Um, so here is 1507. Let's move. Here's our long form. Y'all, the long form really has not changed at all. Um, I, I, I do want to show you the one change is right here under definitions. They did take out market area means that the area in the state of Texas, it used to say within the perimeter boundaries of the following areas. Now they've gotten very specific. Um, insert property address, subdivision, city, county, or zip code. I would see a lot of times come through the term any, like any county, any area in Texas. I wanna caution you from doing that now. Um, I would, I, I was sharing in, in one of the classes this week, you know, you get into some counties in Texas and there's a lot of overlap where you can be, um, especially in some lake areas, you know, you can, you can be in another county and not even realize you've crossed over. Some counties you're paying school in one county and services in another county. So, you know, if you want to keep, if you've got certain counties that you're constantly overlapping in, you might want to list those three counties on there or four counties or whatever it is just to protect you in, in all of those. My concern is the protection. It, it could come down to, since they're holding us to these agreements of saying, you know, um, you, you put Eastland County on here, but you're actually selling a house in Tarrant County. This, this agreement is no longer, is no longer valid. Eastland and Tarrant County are about 40 miles apart, 50 miles, whatever it is. So, I mean, you just, you have to be careful with that. So just think that through. Um, they changed this word that was all in this. So in this, a lot of this is the same. Um, they they moved it up from a different area where it was originally in, in the buyer's rep. Um, but we always had this. A lot of people just put zero. Some people put one, two, three, four, ten, whatever it is that you wanted to put in that blank. But um, here, if you're using the long form, here is, you know, where you're going to put whatever percentage is that you and the buyer negotiate and agree to. With that being said, you have to remember that if the seller is offering more, you cannot take more unless this is amended. You only get what's on this form unless you have amended it. You cannot take more. One of the things I love that Texas Realtors did for us in this is it does say right here, I feel, and you're going to see this throughout these forms, I really feel there was thought process given for us to be able to open the door to conversations that we, we didn't have to come from it in a negative standpoint. It was set up for us in here where we can pretty much read it to them and then it opened the door of the conversation. So it wasn't coming from us in the very beginning. This is one of those times. Broker will seek to obtain payment of the fees specified in paragraph 7A first from the seller or landlord or their agents. If such persons refuse or fail to pay the broker the amount specified, the client will pay the broker the amount specified, less any amounts broker receives from such persons. This, in my opinion, helps in so many different ways from competition on down. We're all speaking the same language right here. Here's, here's our steps of how we're going to do this. Any questions? I'm going to move. I'm going to move on from this. Yes. I have a question. Yes, Larry. Uh, so if we're dealing with new construction and they're offering 3% and they're, they're going to give us additional 1%, I get that we can amend the percentage. But what if it's 4% plus $2,500 BTSA? How is that written here? I would probably put the whole amount right here. That that in that particular one, that might be the best way. I don't think there's another box. There is on the listing agreements, but I don't remember seeing an additional box for additional compensation. I would probably put it as a whole amount right there. You can't keep it open ended. So if it's new construction and it's a custom. You could run into an issue unless the builder is saying I'm only paying at on five hundred thousand dollars. 
any add-ons, which happens a lot in our area, any add-ons we're not going to pay commission on. Um, so I think what you're just going to have to do, um, I would call your area leader whenever you get into that to talk it through as to exactly what's going to be the best way to put it on there. Um, but I would either do it as a whole amount and that amount can be amended. Keep that in mind. That makes so, sense. Thank you. You know, if it's 4% plus 2,500 and then they're adding on and the builder's allowing you to take the commission on the add-ons, you can go and amend that. Thank you. Um, I would probably have that conversation with the client too, that the builders sometimes will do a bonus. So have that conversation up front. So that way it's not awkward later. Absolutely. I agree, Casey, that's a great point. And this is our timeline. I mean, right here, y'all, I love this so much. Use this to your benefit to have these conversations. Don't go just straight here. Go here. I'm sorry, I have a question. I'm yes. driving, so I couldn't raise my hand. So That's pardon okay. me for that. That's okay. But I see the contract and it says a uh, percent of the sale price. Mm -hmm. um, how does that work as far as with a builder? Because some builders do the percentage based on the base price and not the sales so price. How can you adjust that? So I would put the total amount here, figure out what that total amount is going to be and put it right next to it where the dollar sign is. So even though it says sell price, we just put it based on what the contract says. And have it open-ended. But if you know that a base price is $500,000, right. 400000 and they're paying you 3%, then you can either put 12,000 or 15,000 in the dollar blank. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So we can just use an amendment form instead of signing a whole new one, right? So we yes. can sign like a standard 3% of sales price and then depending on that property, if we're working with the builder, then just send that amendment for that specific. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. One more right here. Um, under county, just remember that you're going to still need to fill this in right here as to, you know, I, again, I see a lot of times people put any in, in that blank and the thought process in that of putting any, it's a little bit different than your service areas. At times closings change. We have it a lot where closings will move to Dallas in our area, or they'll move to Houston if it's a foreclosure. So, you know, this may be something that you have to go in and mend as well. If you're putting your specific county down that it's going to close in that county, just keep in mind that whatever you put here, if it doesn't, doesn't look like it's going to close there, you might want to go in and change that. Okay, let's move on. This is where it moved up. So here's your red lines. It technically just moved. And I believe in this, what Texas Realtors did is this was the first draft and then they came in and moved it. So the first set of people got taught on that. Okay. Okay, I wanna, wanna show you one more thing on this form. And um, one of the things I really want y'all to be careful of is wire fraud. And I have found, and, and you know, I speak from wisdom and what is wisdom is when you, you mess up or it's the way that you've been doing things. And then you read and say, I need to change my ways. So right now um, on my team, whenever, you know, a buyer says, I want to wire in my EMD and my option fee. Well, I've got all the title companies, electronic wiring instructions on file. So we just send it over to them. If you are doing that, I'm asking you to stop. That is putting Epic at jeopardy. And the reason is because at times, title companies do change banks, their wiring instructions. And if you are the one instructing wiring to go to a certain place and that's no longer the place, you are now putting Epic and yourself in jeopardy and your buyer, so to say. Um, it has right here, broker will not send client any electronic communication with instructions to wire front funds or to provide personal information. So keep in mind too, that when title companies are asking you to collect 
um, social security numbers and loan information and all of that basically says right there that we're not going to do that. And there is a RESPA form um, that you know allows them to fill out and you can send in to the title company for that protection. But from here forward, I would do nothing with anything with wiring instructions at all. If, if you want to help your client in that, you can wrap your client into an email with the title company and say, you know, Joe Smith is going to um, wire in his option and earnest fee. Can you please provide him with the wiring instructions? And then it removes you out, but you've still done your job, so to say. Here's the amendment that I was referencing earlier when I said there's all it, it will accompany with two forms. So here's your amendment to the buyer's representation agreement. So you're either going to be amending 1507 or 1501 and 1507. So that's short form and long form. So you just need to read and see exactly what it is that you're going to be amending on it. And this would be your form if you're moving them from short form to long form as well. Would this, services. Mm -hmm. Okay, would this also be the form like everyone was talking about? You already have a buyer's rep because you've submitted an offer for a house and they've either terminated or they it was multiple offer, they didn't get it. But they've already signed a buyer's rep with you. Now they found another house. You're gonna use fifth what is this one? 1505 to amend the old buyer's yeah. rep agreement you're right? actually going to use you're actually going to use um 2701 okay with 1505 so you have to have them reassign both two mm -hmm. one is just stating it's being amended the second one is the amendment okay i know i i I've had to wrap my brain around that too. Okay, so to, if you already have a buyer's rep in place and you're re, you're submitting another offer, you've got to do 2701 and 1505. Yes. Okay, that's what I need to know. Thank you so much. And what I'm the the information that I'm sending out to all of you, it has all of that stated in it so that you know that whenever you go and look at 2701, you know the two forms that are going with 2701. I've got it for you written down. Okay. Robbie, I have a question. Um, yes. has, has there been in any internal communication uh, amongst leadership, whether or not we're going to utilize or throw out the short version of these documents, or it's kind of up to us to choose what we want to do? Are you saying the 1507 or the Epic One page that's already in existence? Yeah, the no, not the one that's already in existence. Um, the new form, the new short form versus the long forms that we've been you can using. Use either one. Okay. We Ken and I have already talked about it, and whichever one that you're most comfortable with using in your market area, um, we want you to be comfortable. We don't want the the bottom line is, and I talked to another broker. He called me a couple of days ago. He's, real, he's a close friend of mine who sat on the forms committee to change these forms. And um, he basically said, you know, Robbie, using that showing agreement, I, I feel like that we need to be careful that competition doesn't use that against us. You know, where you the competition, and I'm saying this prior to August 17th, that, you know, in the next two months that people aren't saying, well, your Epic agent is charging you, you know, whatever, and I'm not going to charge you anything. And that's why Ken and I said to keep it very market specific, you know, your market, you know, your competition, and we want you to be able to freely work. We don't want to put those parameters on you. So, okay. And Ken, please, you know, jump in if I'm not saying something um, correct. Okay. So we're going to move now to listing forms. That's our buyer forms. And keep in mind that these, these um, conversations aren't finished. You're going to hear from us again as your area leaders from um, of how to have these conversations as well if you're not comfortable. So here's our, our everybody knows, our exclusive right to sell. So let's move down to where the changes are. 
in pretty much everything, you're going to see this right here. Um, it was all throughout the buyer's rep. I just didn't recognize it on those. Um, but basically that statement is throughout now. So in this form, we have two conversations that you're going to, that you're having with the seller. One is, are they willing to pay um, a buyer's agent? And are they not willing to pay a buyer's agent? Are they willing to pay other things as well? Um, I'm going to skip just a little bit down to this to say, once again, I feel Texas Realtors protected us in opening the door to the conversation with right here. After these two conversations and they decide on which box is going to get checked, we're going to go back up to that in a second. It says, in addition to paying the above broker's fees, seller may be asked by a buyer to contribute an amount towards buyer's expenses, such as buyer's broker fees, or other expenses payable by a buyer under a sales contract. So what does that mean? Why did they put it? Well, if they go this route, they are saying that they will only pay you, but they're not going to pay a buyer's broker. So Texas is letting them know that just because you check this box and say, whatever your negotiated amount is here or your flat fee amount is here, um, that doesn't mean that the buyer's broker is not going to come back and still ask you to pay that fee or to pay a rate buy down or to pay comp and, uh, closing costs or to pay for a home warranty. They still may come back and ask for all of those things to be paid. It's no different than it is now. It's the same. I mean, you know, with, with all of this, I know that they say, well, the, the seller didn't have a choice because the MLS dictated that the buyer's broker would be paid. But keep in mind, we've always had for sale by owners. They've always been there. They got to choose whether they paid a buyer's broker or anybody for that matter. Um, so in this box, here's going to be, you know, your first conversation is, um, you know, if you're willing to pay a buyer's broker and what that amount is going to be. Um, again, we're not going to get into all of the conversations. We're going to get into that later and how they're going to apply to this. Um, but I want y'all to understand this box because I don't want you to mess it up. And last night I had an agent send me over a listing agreement and I questioned it from the box and she had it correct, but it, it looked odd to me. Um, but it's, it's what the seller wanted. So this box is no different than our current listing agreement. This right here is going to be the total amount they're willing to pay. It says when earned and payable, seller will pay broker, insert total amount for broker and other broker, total. So if your area is 3%, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5, 5.5, 5, 6, whatever it is that you negotiate with that seller, it goes right here. Next line is no different. If you remember on page two is where we used to have this right here. And if you scroll down to about page seven or eight, something like that, there was a breakout, four different lines that you could fill in of paying a buyer's broker. All it's done is moved to right underneath this. It's no longer separated out. So here you're going to put, if the other broker represents the buyer, the amount is going to go right here that comes out of this amount. So if you're at 4% and then this would be 2%, then this up here would be a subtraction out. You're technically at 2% and the other is at 2% or 1 or $500, whatever it is. There's no, there's no set amounts. Here would just be you. So total breakout, just you. Does that all make sense? Okay. Can you cover the issue of how that might affect intermediary? How it would... Ken, that may be you that would need to cover that more of how it would affect intermediary. And we might need to research that and get it back to you to have I us agree. Okay. 
but Ken may have the answer. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I agree. We need to research that specific issue. Okay, it's a great okay question. There's, there's specific talk in a couple of classes that because the language specifically states and always has, but they're holding to the other broker. Mm -hmm. So if there's no other broker, there's only going to be one side of compensation. There won't be two sides of compensation. Right. So in other words, well, so in other words Roland, let me let me share this and Ken correct me. What what we have done historically is then the buyer, of course, comes in, which you're talking about with the intermediary, if they want representation or not representation. Um, and and you know, I go back to the term wisdom. Um we, at one point in time, we had a buyer who said, I do not want representation. And I said, as a team leader to the team member, we will not be taking buyer's broker side. And there was a lot of conversation about that. Thank you, Stacey. Um, so there was conversation about that. And luckily, because we made the decision that we made, and that was that we only took what was in the listing agreement on the seller side, that buyer was taking the seller to court, and that was part of it. And I was able to go back and prove that we had not taken anything from the buyer. He actually did represent himself, and we had done all the paperwork properly. So, Roland, this is a great question, and, um, and it's one that we do need to research and, and have a yeah, because there's two separate the distinct, there's two separate and distinct issues. That you're you're right, the unrepresented buyer, but it's mm -hmm. intermediary with appointment. Then you have two agents under the same umbrella, and that's where it may cause issues on future compensation. Yeah, great great question, and one that we will we will get answers to. So I know I can see Ken taking notes. So yeah. I can't right now. So thank you, Ken. <laughs> okay. Robbie, yes, I have a question, not specifically yes. to this, but just because I heard you say that earlier. Um, did you say we cannot send CMAs? Like, do we have to have a listing agreement to send out a CMA? Well, no, not a listing agreement. It's more of a buyer's representation agreement. So, what about, like, on our for our seller clients, like, I work with a lot of like independent builders and they normally want us to do a CMA before they start building the house to see, you know, um, what they could possibly get in that area. So has that like, like we're no, not. You can still yeah. do that. You can oh. do that with a seller. Just you have to be careful with a buyer because. Oh, with a buyer. Okay. Yes. You just have to be careful with a buyer providing a CMA if you don't have a buyer's representation in place. Okay. Okay. Well, we normally don't provide for buyers, but okay. But for sellers, it's still business as usual. Mm -hmm. If a buyer wants a CMA, then we need to be under a buyer rep. Mm -hmm. Also, Ken, I want to make sure that I'm saying this correct. Um, Epic, we always put zero for subagent. We do not. We do not put an amount there to pay a subagent. Um, that that's been the way it is, and I'm assuming that's going to stay the same unless that's changed, Ken, that I don't know of. Yeah. Okay. You're good. Zero. Y'all need to put zero right there. Sub-agency is it's a slippery slope. Okay. Let's move down. Here's where I was talking about where it moved up and became part of the other. Here where it says reserved, all this is stating is that if Texas Realtors chooses to come back in, and make this something of a paragraph since paragraph eight has moved and they kept it. They technically didn't move intermediary up to eight and that kind of thing. So it's just staying in a reserved pattern in case they wanna go in and add something. Okay, here. This is a mandatory box now on your listing agreement. And basically it is, um, I'm going to read it just so that we're all on the same page with it. So seller does <clears throat> or does not authorize broker to share with other brokers and prospective buyers that seller will consider contributing an amount towards buyer's expenses, such as buyer's broker fees or other expenses payable by buyer under a sales contract. 
seller is not obligated to pay any specific amount and has sole discretion to determine the amount the seller will pay towards buyer's expenses during negotiations with the buyer. Now you're going to have another form, and this is going to become a mandatory form for us in EPIC. So first thing is, is again, Texas opened up the conversation of, do you want me to promote that you're willing to help the buyer with buyer's broker fees or other expenses? Or do you not want me to advertise that? Do you just want to see how the offers are going to come in? Um, either here or up at the top where you're, of course, talking about the fees and the breakout, there is an app called Palm One, P-A-L-M-O-N-E. Um, it is an app that has been designed. Um, it, it, it can get very area specific in Texas. Um, for us, one of the title companies basically bought into it. So when we download Palm One in our area, it actually goes to a local title company. So it's all of our property taxes and those different things that are getting populated in. It's, it's a little bit more accurate information. Um, but if, if you've got a seller that's on the fence of how much they're willing to pay in commission and they're wanting another bottom line, that's a good way to go and, and show them. Again, nothing's really changed. What's changed is the conversation. And so that's another tool for you to be able to use. Um, and here's the tool. I want you to be careful when you get to this paragraph to not create any type of steering. This is the paragraph that, and I know that Texas Realtors has protected us as much as they can, but this is where you can get yourself in trouble with steering. And that is saying, no one's gonna look at your property. And if you don't think that realtors out there are already saying it, they are. Because I have a realtor on my team who's selling a property in another city in Texas. And that realtor called her and said, if you don't pay a buyer's broker fees, no one will look at your property. That is steering. And from, from all the talk I've heard, that's going to be our next round of lawsuits. Let's don't be part of them. Let's be careful. So just be careful in this conversation. We're going to have a form, 1412, that we're going to go over in just a few minutes. Here. Hey, Robbie. Yes. Uh, might be getting ahead, but just since okay. we're on the subject. Was there any talk in your meetings if there will be a form? Um, I know Har mentioned that we can get, I guess, an email or something from buyers that they only want to see homes that offer um, compensation. But is there something on the horizon that we get them to sign saying they only want to see homes that do? No, I have not seen anything like that at all. Um, or any type of talk about it. But I do believe that if you if you receive an email saying, these are the homes I want to look at, I mean, we can't say, no, I have to go show you this home. You know, but I think where we can get ourselves in trouble is, here's the homes I will show you because these are the ones offering me a compensation. And since you can't pay a compensation per your lender, well, I'm only going to show you these homes. That's good. Thanks. Right. right. Thank you. Question. Okay. But yes. can, uh, like I, I've had a conversation with uh, some buyers. I'm showing houses to today. Um, it, I, I told them what well, you're basically in the driver's seat because going forward, you will have to pay the difference between what a seller is willing to offer in compensation and <clears throat> um and the agreed upon uh, percentage that, that we have agreed upon in this uh, buyer's agreement. And I, I said, so it probably in the future will take a little bit longer to set up showings because that will be part of finding out ahead of time. So I can present you what they're willing to buy or uh, to pay. And then you decide which of the houses you want to see. Is that an appropriate way to present this? Yeah, and I'm going to tell you, my brain was going in a totally, probably different direction when you started sharing that. Um, I, I've got to wrap my brain around, the, when you said about it puts you in the driver's seat, I love that. 
because the buyer's rep does, especially if they're willing to pay, you know, whatever, um, whatever, you know, you agree upon and they can, it does because we, we now our time is going to get tied up calling listing agents and negotiating. And you're about to see all those forms that we're going to have to get signed by either listing agents or sellers where they can just go look at houses and they may get the house over to somebody else just because they're in a better position. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to think on that. Thank you. I, I, I hope I answered your question and didn't go down a, a, another rabbit trail. Um, but not fully because part of my question was, can, can I present it like this to my buyers? I'll give you the information, what sellers are willing to contribute towards the compensation that yes. we have upon between you and I, and then you decide which of the houses you want to see based on what you like, but also with this additional information on how that may affect your, your loan and how that works. Absolutely. And yes, you can do that because Texas Realtors, unless Ken feels different, Texas Realtors protected us in that saying that that's the first place that we're going to go to try. We're going to try to get it from the sellers and um, the listing agents. So that is information for us to deliver back to our buyers. So I, I don't see where you're doing anything wrong in that. You're Good following answer. what the agreement says. That's what I thought. I just wanted to have it confirmed. Thank you. And Heike, can I just insert that I, I also love how she said that because I think I've been hearing a lot of fear for buyers with, for, with realtors. But this honestly really does give buyers a lot of power um, in what they want to buy in negotiations. And even in the market, too, a lot of people were saying sellers, right, will have more of the power. But just the way Heike awarded it, I was like, thank you for oh, that. Gave me a whole I know. I, I'm so sorry, Heike. I went off whenever you said it in the way that you did. I was like, oh, I'm loving this. Um, yeah, it, it, it was it was good. And, you know, I love what you just said as well. Um, y'all so much. And I, I try to train the agents in my area this all the time, how we process and come across is either going to increase negativity or fear or decrease it. And so that's why I want y'all four weeks to practice these scripts and not make it a script, make it your own in the way that you're saying it and make everything come across that this is positive, not negative at all. There's nothing negative about this at all. And if you're feeling that negativity, I want you to get with your area leader, call me, I don't, I mean, whoever, and, and let's talk it through and, and see how we can reverse that mindset or get on one of Rob Stein's Mindset Mondays. He is fantastic with, with positive mindset through all of this. Okay, so next thing is um, this box right here needs to be checked now at all times. This is basically attaching 1412 to the list, to the listing agreement. Okay, now we're gonna go down to 1412. <laughs> here it is. Robbie, I have a question. Can you back yes. up just a moment? Yes. Which one? Back, back up yes, to the, back. the last box. Right here? Um, no, ma'am. One more or page. Or right there. You were talking about O, correct? On 19? Is that what you were talking about? Oh, right here is um, that, yes, we're going to attach a seller's authorization to disclose and advertise certain information. So but on that form, let's say you have a listing, uh, you know, and, and a seller does not want to advertise an FHA buyer. Is it appropriate to put it on that form or? No, uh, you still have a checkbox on the listing agreement. You just don't check the FHA box. Okay. No different. It's exactly no different. the way that we're doing it now. Okay. Because I feel like I've heard this from a few people and I've actually had someone same, you know, uh, VA, FHA, which I still think a VA loan is the most secure loan you can, you can get. 
uh, as it's government funded as well as an FHA loan, but sometimes they don't want to go that route. Right. And I think that happened a lot, especially after COVID, you know, they started changing things in right. their mindset that they didn't want to go through the appraisal process with some of these right. people. And I just want to make sure is it, so what I, I usually do is put it on, on the notice. Yeah. I put it on the notice though, that seller has authorized to market as conventional or cash is that still appropriate well, I, I mean if that's what if you want to put that in there and, and reiterate that there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that okay um but here is your boxes for it i mean texas does have that on there for right us, that the seller signed right i, I just want to make sure that. nothing was different there okay no. thank you you're welcome okay so let's go back to 1412 y'all we could get into a two hour conversation over this and we probably will, but it won't be today. So I want, I want y'all to start wrapping your mind around this form and how you're going to have the conversations about this form. And I want you to keep in mind about this. And the reason I want you, if, if I would say you had homework, this form is going to be your homework want you to get to know this form and the reason is because this form has so many different implications to it so with it it basically states that the seller doesn't have to do anything that you put in this box and this box could be zero that's why i'm saying this form has to accompany the listing agreement because you this form will protect you if the if a seller ever comes back on you and says, I told you not to, you know, to only market so much amount of money, and then you can go back here and say, no, sir, you told me to market this amount of money. So this is going to be your amount of money. So if your seller says, you know, I'm not willing to, I'm not willing to pay up front, say that I'm going to pay a buyer's broker, but you know, maybe I will consider. $5,000 total or whatever their amount is. I'm just throwing amounts out. There's no set amount. Um, this is what you would put in this box. This is the amount that they are allowing you to disclose. Do you remember 5K your way, 10K your oh, way? Yeah. That's it. There's your 5K your way or your 10K your way. You can't put that in MLS anymore, but it's no different. It's no different than whenever they wanted us to advertise bonuses. It's, it, it's, it's no different, but here is going to be a total amount. We used to break it out in MLS. So it may say 10 K your way, 5 K your way. You've got buyers are going to buyers brokers going to be paid down here in this box. And um, so all the different boxes were split out in MLS and that's all gone. So now the, the seller has to decide if any, how much, do you want me to put out there that you're willing to negotiate on? Keep in mind that even if they put $1,000 in that box, it doesn't mean the buyer is not going to ask them for 10. This is for advertising purposes. And if they don't want anything advertised, nothing gets advertised. I, well, I don't know. Did, David, did you have a question? No, okay. Okay. So Robbie asked a question. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. So on in that in on A in this on um, the seller's authorization to disclose, is does that have anything to do with the cooperation station to the other broker? Or is it strictly in regards to advertising? No, it says it right here. Buyer may use these funds to pay for buyer's broker fees or other expenses payable by buyer under a sales contract. And that's why if a if a seller says to you, you know, look, I want the max. I mean, you know, there are some sellers who don't agree with this lawsuit. Um, so you know, this there, I mean, they there's two specifically in the last month that I've gone on listing appointments with, and they have both said, I'm not happy about this. I feel my right as a seller has been taken away. Well, that doesn't matter. It's it's done, it's law now. So now we have to decide what do you want to you know, that's the past. So what do you want to, to advertise in the future? And if, if they say, I want it fully advertised, 
Um, I want I want them to know I'm going to pay X amount to a buyer's broker. I will pay X amount towards their closing cost or rate buy down. I'm going to give them a home warranty. That was when I was saying that app may come in good or you can just sit and hand write it out and figure out what this total amount might possibly look like to, to advertise. And you're going to have some that want zero. So, but that's, that's where I was saying, we're going to have to get really comfortable with this form because here's where your conversations are going to have to come in of what is going to be to the biggest benefit to the seller and not in a steering manner, more of an informational manner. I had one here that I had to have a conversation with and he, he began it with, I'm not paying a buyer's broker. It's a cookie cutter neighborhood with 17 other houses on the market who are paying buyer's brokers. So do you think that he would not come back on me and say, why didn't you tell me this? Just because I said I didn't want to do it, you had that information, Robbie. Why didn't you say to me 17 other houses are offering it? So, you know, you've got to be careful of giving information and steering. And when I gave him the information, it was not in a steering manner at all. It was, I just want you to be aware of what these others are doing. I'm not in any way saying that that is what you need to do. I'm only sharing with you what other people are doing. And he made his decision at that point in time. Okay. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Whoever was, whoever said, was that David? Who, who said they uh, No, me. Harvey. Harvey. Mm -hmm. um, so on the seller's authorization, are you saying that, um, I don't know, just hypothetically, if somebody says, okay, I'm, I'm paying 2% commission, plus I'll do a warranty, plus I'll give a certain amount for closing costs. Are you saying that we need to add all that amount of funds together and then the total goes in that box? Yes, if that's the amount they're willing to let you advertise. That's the amount that goes in that box. They may, Harvey, they may say like, okay, so then you kind of, you've already done a net sheet for them. So you've, you've got it all out for them. And then you said, okay, how much of this do you want me to advertise? It's the advertising that goes in that box. And they may say, you know what, just do like 5K your way or 10K your way. And let's see if we can just get away. We can't put that in MLS. I'm just using that as an example. But let's let's advertise, you know, that I'll, I'll give $5,000. And the seller may know that he may get hit with 10,000 or 7,000 or 8,000, but he's trying to get away with five. And you're going to probably see that a lot. And that's okay. So it's so, not the it's not at including like the compensation for the buyer's agent yes. because that would change because if they negotiate ten thousand off the price, then right. that is not an accurate amount. It's broker fees right there. Well, but if you read the next paragraph, it says none of it is an accurate amount. It says the seller's not obligated to pay any of it. Doesn't matter what he puts in that box. That, so, that's an important distinction that the seller will consider. They don't have to pay anything in there. Okay. And that's a negotiated amount depending on price or other terms of the contract or offer. Look, right there, will consider an amount up to. It does not, y'all, let's go back. You always got to think about what, like kind of what was it before to kind of apply it. How many times has it said in MLS, seller will leave refrigerator? And then the buyer's agent doesn't ask for the refrigerator in the contract. Seller was not obligated to leave the refrigerator. MLS was informational purposes only. MLS is not a contract. That's what this is saying as well. This is informational purposes only. It's something the seller will consider. Can, can I ask a question about the advertising? So going forward, um, obviously compensation will no longer be included in the MLS, right. but we could do that in like the those mass emails to all the agents or Facebook, I mean, social media marketing, flyers, mm -hmm. et cetera. Yes. yes, you can. The only thing that you cannot do is if you have a website that has an IDX feed to it, my understanding is 
you cannot have compensation on websites that have IDX feeds. So okay. if your Facebook page, which a lot of business Facebook pages for realtors have IDX feeds, don't put it on there if you do. It okay. cannot be where an IDX feed is. Hey, Robbie. Yes. So um, on a listing agreement on back on 11F, seller does or does not authorize broker to share. Mm -hmm. If we're choosing does not, then 1412 is not needed. You know, Correct? here's the thing. The only reason why I said to keep it is that it reiterates it again to open up the conversation again, Larry, and to put the zero right there and show them you're not advertising this understood so that, yeah just because then it may make them say let me rethink this or wait i checked the wrong box you know that kind of thing i just think it's an assurity and maybe no, thank i'm over cautious on it but i just feel like it's an assurity Catherine, did you have a question mm, i answered it okay I have a question. What if it's a percentage? If it's a percentage that is going to go right here? Yes. Um, I would, let's see if they've got a, because they didn't put percentage on there. They only put dollar amount. And I would assume a lot of it's going to be percentage because that would be easier than putting a dollar amount. It would be. Just based on the price. You know, a contributing an amount up to would be two percent. Can can we can we every example, amount? every example that I've seen so far is a dollar amount. So I mean, you may have to round, but I mean, it makes allowances for a dollar amount, not a percentage. I know a percentage would be easier, but right now, let's move forward with the mindset that okay. it needs to be a dollar amount. And we're just gonna have to to put that dollar amount into play. And, and, you know, keep in mind that whenever you're doing a, whenever you're doing a net sheet, we're having to convert the percentages anyway on a net sheet level. So if you've got a $300,000 listing agreement, I mean, it may or may not go under contract for $300,000, but we're working our numbers from that initially. So, okay. Y'all okay for us to move on? I had uh, um, how much more one do, last question. Do, how much okay. more do we have to go? Uh, we are almost yeah. finished. Oh, um, good. Excellent. Sorry. Yeah, we've got, go no, you're okay. We've got a couple of more that I just want to kind of make sure that they are aware of. And then, and then we're good. We're done on this one. Hmm. Um, okay. If I, could, I do just have one more question. Mm -hmm. Did you mention earlier that checkboxing O on the prior form and this one is going to be like mandatory as far as unless, that is concerned. Unless Ken changes it, what we what Ken and I talked about yesterday is we really do need to make that mandatory. Gotcha. Yeah. Awesome. Just double checking. Thank you. Just to protect you. I mean, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this to y'all. CMAs at the company that I was with before were not mandatory. They were mandatory on my team, but they were not mandatory with the company. It is one of the things I've loved about coming to Epic is that those are mandatory because they protect us. Anything that can protect you or protect the company, I'm all for. And I think that that is just another layer of protection for you. Okay, so here's the, the, the remaining, we're gonna go quick through them. The remaining is the representation disclosures. And um, so this one you would use if you are a listing agent and you are just showing the property um, and, and providing information to that buyer, you're disclosing that you represent the seller here. So this is the one that we were talking about earlier that Roland, I believe, was asking about, about we would transition from this in, into an intermediary situation, so to say. Um, but this is just a disclosure of who we represent. You don't have to have this at open houses, but if you're showing, you would need to, to have it. If you're actually, you know, get a sign call. 
This is form 2406 is a new form. And um, this is going to be part of the sales contract now. And this is going to be how title companies pay us and put it on the closing disclosure. Um, so this would be um, who is paying us? Is it going to be the listing broker? Is it going to be the seller and how that's going to be paid? Y'all can read this at a, a later time, but um, I would highly recommend that you get this filled out because the title company is probably going to start requiring these. Um, our CDA also directs it. However, this is, is a directive for the title company. And if you look here, here's your here's the authorization for the title company that the buyer and the seller are authorizing the escrow agent to pay. Okay, next one is compensation between broker and owner. This is your other form that is, um, this is going to be when the seller agrees to pay the buyer's broker. This would be the form. So if, if they've checked that second box in the listing agreement and now they've agreed to pay, this would be the form that's going to get filled out. Yes. Uh, is it is it Jacqueline or Jack? Jack Jacqueline. Jacqueline, I love that. Okay. So in the uh, instance where a buyer is paying a portion or all of a broker's compensation, how do we communicate that to all parties or to the title company? How is that handled? I would just send an email to the title company and, and let them know. And if they're asking you for any additional forms, then you would get the forms that they're going to require. So that would be, that would be whatever it is that they're wanting. Okay. Okay. And then the last one is going to be the compensation agreement between brokers. So this would be if the listing agent, so that would be if box number one had been checked and that breakdown would be, this would be where we would be paid on this one. And I just wanna bring these last two to your attention and we're done. Here's our new referral agreement. We do have referral agreements in Epic as well, but this is the new Texas Realtors referral agreement. And also general information, this is a required form in Epic. And um, the verbiage is now in there that I was sharing with y'all as a, as a definition of what compensation is. So if you are updating your buyer's rep agreements, if you're doing the two amendments to the buyer's rep agreement or the listing agreement, please include this form as well. Update this form as well. And that is, that's it. Any, y'all right. can start leaving if you would like to start leaving. And if anybody well, has any I questions. Want, I'm before they start, start leaving, I want everyone to thank Robbie. Thank you, Robbie. Great oh, job. Welcome. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Robbie. Great information. You're welcome. Thank you, Robbie. And um, somebody you're asked. Welcome. Thank you, Robbie. Thank somebody you. Somebody asked in the meeting chat about, um, are the forms on the Epic Cloud now? They're in dot loop. Okay. And they're in zip forms. Okay. Will somebody be, um, I know we have a checklist of forms whenever we take a listing or do a buyer's rep. Will there be a checklist of all the things that we need so we can all stay in compliance, don't get sued? We need to update our list. You are exactly right. Thank you very much for pointing that out. We will get that done. Okay. Thanks. And then um, this is being recorded, right? So is there, a, will we get a replay of this? Like a link to this Zoom? Don? I, I think it's being recorded it? on my end. So yes, since it's under mine, yes, I can. Absolutely. Okay. We'll